Um, I'm here again to do a devotion this morning that God has put in my heart. Today, the subject that I would like to talk about is fear and anxiety. And not just what fear and anxiety do to us, but what fear and anxiety do to others around us. Um, I received affirmation on this this morning in my morning devotions in Morning with Jesus. The verse from Philippians was the verse for the day, but it was in a different wording, one that I really enjoyed. From the uh, Good News translation, it says, Don't worry about anything, but in all your prayers, ask God for what you need, always asking him with a thankful heart. And God's peace, which is far beyond human understanding, will keep your hearts and minds safe in union with Christ Jesus. Amen. I wasn't sure how I was going to start my story today. I knew uh, when Sue had texted me about talking again that God had put something on my heart this month. And so I knew what I wanted to convey to you, but I wasn't sure how I was going to do it. And then yesterday, the Holy Spirit moved in Pastor Keith to talk about 2 Corinthians 5, and he started with verses 1 to 10. So I pulled four points out of his um, talk yesterday to be able to convey what I'm trying to say today, what the Spirit has put on my heart. In verse 1, my first point, it said, Now we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. So let me tell you about my faith story, my trust story, my different type of fear story. Um, in 2007, I had double knee replacement on February 13th, and I was not afraid at all. Um, I had such peace, and I just knew that if I woke up from that surgery, <laughs> I'd be waking up here, and that God still had a plan for me, and that I would move on to healing. And if I didn't wake up, I knew I would be in heaven. And it was just, I just knew it. I just had such faith in the awesomeness of God, in that type of fear. And what happened was, it just led to so many blessings that, for example, in pre-op, I was um, met by a lot of different people, but one was a nurse, and I can't say this word very well, anesthetist. His name, I later found out, was Aaron Zawatsky. And Aaron and I talked about faith, talked about our love of the Lord. He prayed with me. We talked about Christian music that we liked. It was just a wonderful, relaxing time. So by the time I was wheeled into the operating room, what happened was the anesthesiologist gave me a shot in my back, which started to numb me. I remember lying down and having, I could see my legs being lifted, but I really couldn't feel anything. And I was trying to sing in my head the words to how great is our God. And I couldn't focus um, just because I think of all the anesthetics and things. Aaron was behind me monitoring uh, twilight sleep and my doctor was off to the right. I could see him and I asked, I said, Aaron, and he, and he looked at me and he said, Judy, what's the matter? Is everything okay? And I said, did you say you knew the song, How Great Is Our God? And he said, yes. And I said, will you sing it to me? <laughs> so he looked, he looked at my doctor and my doctor did a head shake, and I fell asleep in my knee surgery with the operating room filled with the words to the song, How Great Is Our God. So that was just an awesome blessing. So the second part. God gave his spirit to us as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Our yes to him opens that up for us. And so that happened um, just in me saying yes to Sue, 
I wasn't sure how I was going to talk today. And Pastor Keith was moved by the Spirit yesterday to talk as he did. This morning, the Spirit moved through my devotional with the verse from Philippians at the beginning. And he is just so working in our lives that um, if we say yes to whatever it is that we fear or are anxious about, he will get us through it. Number three, a point that he said yesterday was, our works prove our faith. And as I said, um, my faith that day came out in asking Aaron to sing, and it filled an operating room with songs praising God. So sometimes what we do exactly proves our faith. However, number four, he said, we are supposed to be a light on the hill, pointing people to God, pointing people to Jesus. Now I'm experiencing needing surgery on a vein in my right leg. And I am a basket case. I have been um, dealing for about, I bet it's four years now, with an occasional clot that is a surface clot and was painful, but then I had a searing pain in my leg that was worse than I ever felt, and I have gone to see a vascular person a few times. They want to do a procedure, and I don't know why I am so afraid of this procedure. And it doesn't seem like I'm even the same person that had the double knee replacement. So the last time I was there, I saw the doctor and the PA and a nurse, and I was asking questions that didn't make any sense really to the procedure. I was asking questions out of fear. The last thing that I did was exhibit somebody that had faith in God work, working in their lives. There is no way that those people in that room could have felt that I had such a deep faith and trust in the Lord. And more to that, I made the doctor feel awful. I, I knew that he felt untrusted. He felt like I didn't honor his giftedness. Um, when he walked out of the room, I felt so convicted, so ashamed of how I made him feel because of my fear. And I knew that there was something really wrong there. So in talking to the PA, I made the decision that I needed to write this, and I agreed to go ahead with the procedure. So that's the next step. And I would love to be able, between now and the time that that happens, to walk into there with the same encouragement for them, the same light shining for them that I carried into the OR. For me, I, I said the difference was um, the type of fear. and. Currently, especially in this situation, when I went to the vein doctor, I had to walk in a different building and get temperature and had a mask and I was overheated and there was just all the other things that in a COVID world add to fear. And the uncertainness of everything going on now, um, there are other things that come alongside that, but it's, it's earthly fears and earthly anxieties, all the things that, that happened that way where when I had my knee surgery, it was the fear of God. And not fear afraid of God, but the awesomeness of God, the, the way that God has always provided, the way that he has a plan, the way that we have salvation through Jesus Christ. All of that was the fear that I relied on in that surgery, and I really wanted to get back to that. Some of our... Um, best prayers, our greatest prayers, are just scripture. It's just our scripture prayers. And um, I realized, and I don't know how I could have forgotten, because I did call on this prayer one time as um, I had the burning sensation in my leg a few years ago,
but for weeks before my other surgery, I would recite Psalm 139 in prayer. And it was the most reassuring and wonderful testament of how God knowed, knows me, knows you, knows each one of us, and knows the plan he has for our lives. So that's how I would like to pray today for closing. And more than that, I would like to ask you to take the time to find that scripture that's God calling for you in your life. There's something he has for you for whatever you're dealing with that is in his word. And I encourage you to um, seek that out. And if you say yes, the spirit will lead you to it. Let's pray. Oh, Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. You hem me in behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to explain. And I lost my thoughts there, so let me get it open to the next place. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the dark will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. I did not memorize the next part, but search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me, and lead me in the way of life everlasting. Amen. People, I would love for you to have the most blessed weekend and walk with faith and fear of God and not fear and anxiety. In Jesus' name, amen.